I worship by spreading the love of Jesus. I work with a center in Baban, Swaziland um, for um, orphaned and vulnerable children. Some of the kids are orphans, some have one parent, some have both parents but their parents are too sick to work or can't find work. Um, and I've been working with them for several years now and we find sponsors for school, sponsors for food, and when we go down there, we just love on them. We um, take them to the hospital if they need that. We do doctor visits. We do parent-teacher school conferences. Um, but mainly I just hug them a lot because they just, I want them to know that they have a savior who loves them no matter what, and I want them to know that um, it's not a conditional love, that it's a love that doesn't matter how much you have or um, where, you, where you are in life because so many of them, um, not having family, not having parents is something that they're really used to. And I mean, that's not right for any child. So I worship by spreading the love of Jesus because that's what he's asked us to do. I worship God through prayer. I feel as though this is a direct communication that I have with him here on earth with me. I actually compare it a lot to a conversation that I can have with a friend, whether it's a venting conversation or just simply a catching up conversation. Um, and I know and I trust that whenever I do have these prayers or conversations with God, I will get the counseling that I need to get through the situation that I'm talking to him about. I worship God through fellowship. I have a small group called Girl Talk, and what we do is we meet every Thursday night at 9 p.m., and we do arts and crafts, and we talk about different topics from a female perspective. It's like such an amazing thing, like to see different girls from different places come together and share and be open and say, well, you know, even though I don't look like you, I too go through that. Seeing like how community and fellowship really just breaks down those walls, and you need people to help you go through your problems. You know, you can't walk this earth alone. You need people to help you and to just guide you and be there for you and pray for you when you don't have any words to say. I worship God by counseling others. What is my position in their lives? Just to listen to them, just to be there. You know, believe it or not, that's, that's part of it. Knowing that, that I'm going to be there when they show up, that they can count on me, that I'm one person that seeks deeply and with um, all that my mind is, is capable of to, to empathize, to, to, to share in their grief with them and to help walk with them this journey of the unknown, this journey of great apprehension and fear, this journey towards wholeness and shalom, this journey towards hope, and ultimately is the journey toward God. So it's a very journey that I myself am on. Being a counselor is in no way, shape, or form a, a suggestion to the outside world that, that I have things figured out, that, that um, you know, I've kind of graduated from, from the undergrad of life. So you know, it doesn't mean that at all, it means that uh, in light of my struggles, I, I believe God is enabling me and empowering me to be, you know, an instrument in the hands of the, uh, the masterpiece mind and the um, perfect surgeon. I worship God through my tattoos. Uh, basically, so I got these tattoos. This is my first tattoo. It's a tree. The roots go deep into the earth and they stand there. And that's how I feel like I am with Christ. I feel like my relationship is rooted in him and I know who I am in him, but I'm not fully done developing. I know that I still have a lot of growing to do. So the reason why I got it on my forearm is to remind me every time I look down, because I'm a lefty, so every time I look down to like hold a pen or something or I'm worshiping and I lift my hands and like worship, I guess, like I'm reminded on my chest is be still and know. In the midst of all the crap that's going on all around me, I need to just we still know that he is God and that he can handle everything that I think I can only handle. I worship God through my tattoo. For Christianity, elephants stand for chastity, temperance, and patience, so I got three elephants shaded in. I got it on my wrist because when we were weak, we were made strong, and I broke my wrist three times. I worship through music. Um, the verse that I always go by is 1 Corinthians 10.31. It says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I mean, God's given me the talent, then why not use it for his kingdom? Why not use it to expand his kingdom um, even further? You know, Because music, they say music is a universal language, and it's so true. Um, it doesn't have to be words. It, it can be just guitar playing or violin playing or you know, just the drums itself. It is my self-expression of when I can't use my own words. I wish I could use music. I 
worship God through art. I've always known that I had the ability to draw. I didn't realize till college that I could use that as a worship. Drawing is the one thing where I can completely focus. It's the only thing where when I'm drawing, the only thing that I'm thinking about is God and what he's showing me. And this is a picture of um, an Indian child that I saw in a magazine, but it really just touched my heart. I've always liked to draw. Um, I enjoy it, but I didn't realize that God enjoyed it too. I can use art to draw God's creation, God's people, um, God's love in my life and what he's done. The way I worship God is by working with the youth. I work with the youth at church. I also work with the youth at a summer camp that I go to and I've been at for a very long time. Um, I feel like in worshiping God, there must be realness, there has to be peace, love, and I feel like I can give that off to the youth and God has used me as an instrument to help out the youth and this is how I worship God. I went to a camp that was a branch off of an organization called New Hope Uganda. New Hope Uganda was started to to bring the fatherhood of God to the fatherless. I had to make a decision every day, every day to get up and, and choose to work for God. And that was the way I worshiped. It was like, God, I'm, I'm gonna get up today. I'm gonna go do some random job at this camp like um, sanding wood or scraping varnish off of windowsills. It was real like a lot of these tedious jobs I had to do for for what reason and and the the reasons I brought myself to was God this is just this is just gonna have to be wor worship to you and that worship this summer was to to build relationships with people you know sitting down hearing their story hearing what they go through having fun with them that's that's really worship we were created for relationship you know and and worship is just doing that is spending time with people you know, that that goes a lot further than giving you know food for you know for a day you know a relationship lasts you know, a lifetime, and they'll remember that, you remember that. That's, a, that's one great way you can worship.